Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on SQL solved problem number 2. Let's step into the problem. The question is, given the following statements. Statement 1, a foreign key declaration can always be replaced by an equivalent check assertion in SQL. Statement number 2, given the table R with the attributes A, B and C where A and B together form the primary key. The following is a valid table definition. Create table, table name is S, with the attributes A of integer type, D of integer type, E of integer type, where the attribute D is the primary key. Also, there is a foreign key. This value A is referring to another relation R, where R has three attributes A, B and C, where A and B together form the primary key in the relation or the table R. Then what's the question? Which one of the following statements is correct? This question was a part of Gate Computer Science in the year 2014. The options are, option A, statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. Option B, both statement 1 and statement 2 are true. Option C, statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true. Finally, option D, both statement 1 and statement 2 are false. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. I hope you are done. Let's analyze the options. For that, at first, let us inspect statement number 1. Here we go. When we talk about statement number 1, there is a comparison between a foreign key declaration, whether that foreign key declaration can be replaced by an equivalent check assertion in SQL. To understand things, let me show you the example what we have seen earlier when we were dealing about the check assertion in SQL. Here it is. To understand the check assertion, I have explained you about creating a table with the name student where the gender should accept one of the values from the list. Can you see here, whatever we are inserting in the student table, for the column gender, it should accept either M for male or F for female. That's it. No more values except M or F are permitted for the column gender in the relation student. So what we are enforcing here is a check constraint where check is going to verify the condition at the row level or at the entity level. So check is basically an entity level integrity constraint. Coming to foreign key, let's take the example from the question itself. As per the question, relation S is here and relation R is here. We have a foreign key constraint. Let's not consider statement 2 for now because our focus is now on statement 1 as we are comparing the check assertion and the foreign key. When we talk about foreign key, let's assume the relation or the table S is having an attribute or the column called A. Whatever the value that I am going to insert in this column, all these values should be available in the other table R and this attribute should be a primary key attribute in this table. In other words, in the parent table, the value should be already existing before the values are inserted in the child table. Now, if you observe here, this foreign key actually enforces referential integrity, not an entity level integrity constraint like check where foreign key definitely require two tables. For check, it does not require two tables to be involved. Check constraint can validate the values that falls within a specific range or set of values within the same table. But check cannot enforce relationship between two tables. A foreign key can establish relationship among two tables. So from this, it's clear that Statement 1 is false. Also, I'll give you one more fact. Not just referential integrity, this check cannot enforce. Also, it does not handle cascade operations. What is cascade operation? Suppose if we delete a value in the parent table, we expect those values to be deleted in the child table as well. Let's say there are some values that are already there in the parent table and some values are inserted by checking the referential integrity. Let's assume we delete a value from the foreign table. Obviously, this value is being referred by the child table. Now, what should happen? It should also be deleted, right? 
So these things we can do with the help of a foreign key declaration, which is definitely not possible with a check constraint. From this, it's clear that statement number one is false. So when we check the question, obviously statement number one is false, but we also need to ensure if statement number two is true or both S1 and S2 are false. We need not even check about option A and B because it's confirmed that S1 is false. So the right answer should be either C or D. Now let's move on to finding out whether statement number two is true or false. Let's take the referential integrity constraint. If you observe, as per the question, there exists a relation S, there exists another relation R, where this S has a primary key attribute D and R has a primary key attribute which is A and B together. Whatever the value we insert to the column A in the relation S is going to have a referential integrity where these values are going to be referred on the parent table R where the parent table contains A and B together as the key. So obviously, this A is not a candidate key or a unique attribute in the relation R. So the A of the relation S cannot refer to both the attributes A and B as the key in the parent table R. To be precise, when we say this is the foreign key, this foreign key must reference a candidate key. It means whatever we insert here, it should refer a single attribute. If you want the definition of a primary key, a primary key is a column or a combination of columns that uniquely identifies a row or a tuple in a table. Whereas a candidate key can be any column or set of columns that can act as a primary key. Since the A of S relation or table needs to refer A and B jointly together in the relation R, the statement number 2 is also false. So obviously, option D is the right answer here, meaning both statement 1 and statement 2 are false. I hope the things are clear to you. I'll see you in the next presentation. Thank you for watching.